Isadora, the star of Lonely Lady, was the first actress to receive back-to-back -back Razzie Awards for Worst Actress. Goodness. Pia Isadora, by the way, just a little background on her. She was a child Broadway actress at 10 years old. She said Tallulah Bankhead taught her how to smoke a cigarette backstage. She eventually married one of the richest men of the world, who was twice her age, so she was this very notorious, kind of tabloidy, trampy media celebrity. Her rich husband was so enthused by her that he put up tons of money and produced three really horrible movies. The first film that he produced was called Nevada Heat, which is probably the worst of the three. I only like the opening number of Isadora Sings. It's called Those Eyes. It's so manical, it's so over the top, and I just, I love her, and she's wearing a Bob Mackie. The second vehicle for Isadora was called Butterfly, and it's probably her most notorious film, as it gained her a controversial Golden Globe for Best Newcomer. The rumor was that the award was bought by her rich husband. And I think all of those awards are probably bought and sold anyway, so I literally get, I don't give a fuck about that. People go on about that. Who cares? You know, it's not like the award was best actress of all time, greatest performer, greatest singer. No, she was best fresh new talent. And you know what? She was this Lolita of the early 1980s. Anyway, this all led up to The Lonely Lady. So this was like her big Hollywood movie. It was produced by Universal Studios. It's actually half of the budget, if not more, was put up by her husband. The Lonely Lady tells the story of Jerry Lee Randall, who is this female author who is trying to make it in Hollywood on her own merits and yet every producer, every agent, every everybody just basically wants to fuck her and she's trying to not sleep her way to the top but eventually she succumbs to all of that. Do the press tour on this movie she said that it was like a mix between Rocky with Sylvester Stallone and the Emmanuel movies and that's I think sort of astute. I don't know anything about Rocky but a lot of the sex scenes were very Skinamax, very Emmanuel. For the early 80s, this was supposed to be Universal's feminist or women's right movie. I think it talks the talk, but it doesn't really walk the walk. So it does call out a lot of the double standards between men and women. It is talking about how women are mistreated in Hollywood, but then it also reverts back to being this kind of heterosexual male masturbatory fantasy. The motivations of every character are an enigmatic mystery. One minute they're really kind, sweet, caring people to Jerry Lee, the neck, like on a dime, for no reason. We have no insight to why they would do this. They become these vicious, evil people. At the 12 minute mark in this movie, there is a horrible horrible sexual assault with a garden hose. I'm just warning everybody because I know that's not everyone's thing. I don't even think it's my thing. In the novel, we're given all this context. The book is begins in the 1950s. Jerry Lee befriends an African-American band member at the country club she works at, and this upsets the redneck boys that she goes to school with, so they go and attack her. So in the book, it's given this kind of context of why somebody would do that. It's because of racism, and the movie, though, it's like, what? why is this happening? We have no clue. Is Ray Liotta's character an escaped convict who went back to finish senior year, and then he, you know, goes crazy and... I don't know. This movie does not care whether we know or not. Jerry Lee's mom is hilarious. She speaks in exposition, so she's always just explaining what's going on in the plot. At the same time, lassoing the spotlight back to her, making it all about her, and criticizing every little thing Jerry Lee does. Jerry Lee thinks I fuss too much. <laughs> but I can't stand clutter. Like, oh, I can't stand clutter. Bitch, your house is cluttered. All these sets give me an anxiety attack, but anyway, very manic, very chaotic decorating, and I, and I have a problem with it. I've heard Lonely Lady described as the baby showgirls of the 80s, and I think this is very astute. I think Pia Zadora crawled in the form of hyperventilating, fully clothed while taking a shower so that Elizabeth Berkley could walk or run in the form of flailing wildly in a swimming pool on top of Kyle MacLachlan. Lonely Lady makes Showgirls look like All About Eve. I think Paul Verhoeven was a genius. I think Showgirls is a beautiful, amazing, cruel film. 
Lonely Lady is a horrible movie. Is like everything, almost everything about it is inept. Why? Why? <laughs> so my favorite scene in the movie is she's doing the rewrites for a screenplay that her husband wrote while they're on the set of a movie, and she has this inspired idea to do this fabulous rewrite, and she pours her heart and soul, you know, turning this long dramatic speech the actress is supposed to say into one word: why. So she looks at the preacher and asks, why? One word, that's all you need. Why? Why? You want to feel bad for her because later on her husband takes credit for her rewrite. First he gets mad at her for rewriting it, then people like the rewrite that she did, and then he takes credit for it. So it's like, you want to feel bad for her, but then you think about, she only wrote one word. Really? That was her rewrite? Was why? I literally imagined her, like, typing the word why on a blank sheet of paper, and that was the whole rewrite. And then the woman screaming why, her face is later put on the movie poster, which is seen in Pia Zadora's apartment. And it's like, oh my god, so the line that you wrote made it onto the movie poster. What a coincidence. Isn't that interesting? Pia Zadora stars in a movie where the characters in the movie are dancing to a Pia Zadora disco song. What? I love this. This is like a shameless plug, shameless self-promotion, and I'm actually really here for it. I was almost expecting someone to be like, who's singing this? Oh, it's Pia Zadora. Her script. This movie could have been called My Script because she says that a lot. I've got a script. In this screenplay, I've captured a Excuse me. Your eyes are most beautiful. What do you think of this script? Your eyes are most beautiful. Your script is beautiful. Hey, what about my script? What? My script! <laughs> and nobody ever reads a script, by the way. I write for anyone, Vinny. I write for me! Me! So, her character goes gay for her script. In the novel, she's happily bisexual and just kind of down with it. In the film, it makes it seem very repulsive, like a same-sex encounter is just the worst thing that could happen to her. Uh, eventually, all of these horrible things that happen to her lead her to have this breakdown, and it's this great kind of Warholian moment where the screen changes color. Which, by the way, Warhol loved Pia Zadora in real life and actually did her portraits. And they're listing off the nominations of this award. There are two people named Jerry Lee. Who the fuck, first of all, is named Jerry Lee? No offense to any Jerry Lees out there, but it's just a very uncommon name. I'm not saying I hate the name. I'm just saying, why would there be two people named Jerry Lee on the same fucking ballot. Did the, sc the screenwriter really thought that would be clever? I don't know. Why? I'm just left screaming, why? Why? <laughs> I'm always horrified, delighted, touched, and repulsed by the lonely lady. When it's being sentimental, it's somehow perverted. When it's purposely being perverted, it's very sentimental. So talk about tonal whiplash. I love Pia Zadora's look when she accepts her award at the end. In the next few years, the next few Oscars that we have, or Golden Globes, someone's gonna do this. Someone's gonna get up there and say, I'm not the only one who had to fuck my way to the top, or I had to do this, this, and this just to get this award. So thanks a lot, Hollywood. I think this is gonna happen. It's just too weird, too ahead of its time. I don't suppose I'm the only one who's had to fuck her way to the top. Pia Zadora has a fabulous sense of humor about her weird career. She's like one of those people that embraced how bad the movie was. Like Patty Duke embraced Valley of the Dolls. And Elizabeth Berkley, I think, embraced Showgirls later on. She's one of those that's like, I know people watch this movie because they like to laugh at me, and I'm okay with that. So I think that's sort of beautiful too. Pia Zadora lives right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I tried to go see her once at her restaurant, but she didn't show up, so I was a little butt hurt. But I'm gonna go back after everything opens up again and try to see her sing at Piero's, because I just, I adore her. I adore Butterfly. I adore Lovely Lady. Um, I'd say even look up her song with Jermaine Jackson. It will alter your molecules. It's so, so bizarre, so weird, so wrong, but it's right. My name's Jacob Lomax, and thank you so much for watching Strangest Films. Oh!